Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's my logo. Oh, look, I have a clock. I feel like I'm at a political convention. I get a light and everything. Anyway, Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and they asked me to speak, and I chose to do something on photo stories. Have, have anybody out here know of my stuff? At least two people. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, so I'm sure people out there do know my stuff, but I wanted to talk about photo stories, because today there's so much emphasis on snapshots, people taking, in essence, crappy photos uh, and not making photographs. And I like to have photographs that tell a story. So you have not just one image that you put up and put out into the world that's okay or good, you have an entire series of images that tells some kind of story. It conveys some kind of emotion. And with a photo story, it doesn't always have to be positive. Uh, it doesn't have to always be happy. And I didn't pick a happy photo, uh, I didn't pick a happy photo story to share, which is never, it, you'll, you'll see. So, the photo story I'm going to show you involves my mom, uh, and we'll see where that ends up, because it, it's definitely not, it's not happy, but it's a good photo story. So this was a day before my mom's 60th birthday. Uh, we rushed her to the hospital because she was having some kind of major issue uh, that we didn't know what was happening, and I, I think her, her blood cell count was terribly low. She could have died at that point, and, and so I decided to take photos. Um, the nurses told me no, because of HIPAA. I said, bleep HIPAA, and shot anyway. What are you going to do, arrest me? I mean, I, I'm here to take photos. This is what I do. I take photos. It was honestly my way of hiding behind the emotion. My way to deal with it was to photograph it, but we didn't know what was going on at this point. We didn't know what was wrong. So I just was taking photos. Um, my dad's there. And this was 2000 and, yeah, it had to be 2007 or 2008. And I'm just, I'm just telling a story. Whether it's black and white, whether it's color, it doesn't matter. It's what goes together from start to finish. And we move through and you get different angles. Because to me, what a photo story is about, it's about capturing not just the wides. You need, you need your wides. You need your mediums. You need your tight shots. You need your details. Put them all together and you get an amazing story to tell. So if anybody's an amateur out there listening or you're just getting started, just Think about that. Think about covering those angles. You get the wide shots. They establish the scene like we did in the very first shot. It's establishing the area. We're in an, an ER, which sucks, but we're there. Uh, you get a wider thing. You have the, you've got so much going on in an image. So no matter what the photo story is, those are the shots. And you come in a little tighter. I mean, the, the emotions in these images, they're, they're immense. I don't look at these too often, but every, they're, they're on my website. Um, and it's just, yeah, I mean, it's an, emotional, it's an emotional photo story. So basically what happened is at the end of this night, they, they had one of their specialists come in and they said, we think uh, that you have a certain kind of cancer. They haven't typed anything yet, but then they were like, we can probably treat it. So they tell you that, but they don't really know for good. Uh, and they wanted her to go in. She stayed in the hospital, and it was... I believe she, you know, just different emotions. She's talking to people. She's happy. My mom was always, always happy, always excited, always caring. Her friends, unfortunately, her friends, each one of these people lost a family member to, to cancer. And, um, yeah. So telling the photo story here. I mean, it's emotional. Is this emotional? Do you guys, do you feel any emotion coming out of this? Do you people at home, and by you people, I mean whichever camera's on me right now, there's emotion here. And it's, it, it's just, that's what the images are supposed to do. If your images don't elicit a response or any kind of emotion, you're, you're just taking snapshots. And there's a huge difference between snapshots and photographs. Photographs just, they have emotion. You feel it. Like you go through your Flickr, uh, your, your, your Instagram, or you go through Facebook, and you go picture after picture after picture, and then you stop at one, 
You stop at one because it elicits some kind of emotional response in you, and those are the differences between the snapshots that are just blah that a lot of people put into the world and, and the photographs that make you stop. And just imagine what happens when you take a bunch of quality and solid images and you put it into a story People feel like they're there, especially if you have your kids and they're playing soccer and you're getting photos of them tying their cleats and then they go out and they play. They're in the car, they're with their friends, they're playing and you tell this photo story, it's going to look fantastic. And then if you want to become a photographer and sell these things, these photo stories sell themselves. You can shoot for your kids, you can do weddings, it's all about that. But 60th birthday in the hospital sucks. But you can see all the details in the images. We brought other photos to hang on the wall. The family was there. We had to make sure that the oxygen wasn't on in the room so we didn't blow it up. But grandma, my, my mom's mom, Lil, just telling these stories. My brother with uh, my sister-in-law, just capturing moments that are there. And I, and I do come back to, I hid away behind my camera here. This was the one way that I could deal with it, was to take photographs and just, just tell the story. Mom and dad, sister-in-law and mom. And then the first day of chemo, went and photographed that. That wasn't easy. They're pumping you full of something that you can't even touch. That's the, that's the, that's the insane thing about people that are on chemo, you, you go, they put gloves on, you're not allowed to touch the stuff in the bag, and they're putting that into your body. It, it makes you think it's okay to go in your body, but you can't touch it. It's just, it, it's insane. So this is one of those detail shots, talks about the story. And then the day after her first round of chemo, my mom and dad and grandma were going to a bat mitzvah for a family member, so I'm there just telling this story, capturing her doing the hair of my grandmother. And this is just, I, 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 lo I love photo stories. Uh, as you can tell, I just, I, lo I love doing them. Not, not something like this, not something like this, but just capturing the different stories and what's going on. And then we fast forward. So my mom, for a while, the, the chemo was working and then the, then the disease, she has n had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma of the T cells which was a, there's two forms, there's B cells and there's T cells. The T cells you die with within two years, basically. 90% were dead in two years. And non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the B cells is something that you live with. You don't die from, you die with. And unfortunately, she pulled the, the short straw and got the other one. So she was healthy for a while. Like, not, not healthy, not recovered, but the drugs were working and then they morphed. And I stopped taking photos for that time because I felt like, she, she was going to get through it. Like, this was something that was going to be OK. Um, and then the further that we went on, it, obviously, it, it started to not look good. And they tell you when, when a disease morphs, when the cancer morphs, it's going to continue to morph no matter what you do to it. And that's, that's what happened here. So I just, I just felt I had to tell the story. And this was when it started, it started to get worse sleeping a lot. She coughed all night, every night. My room was next door to this, so I heard it all the time. Um, but they're, they're, you know, it, it, you guys feel, do you feel this? Not that I can see much, but you, you feel what's going on. It, it touches us all. We've all been there. It, it, it's more prevalent cancer today because everybody knows somebody who has it. But you understand that stories, photo stories don't, they're not just positive things. I mean, this hopefully helps somebody. It, it, it brings the emotions back. You can't hide the emotions away forever. You have to acknowledge them. You have to face them. And you, and you just have to go from there. Um, so I would just wake up. I would go take photos, whatever, whatever I felt I could hide away with. I, see, I, I hid away my emotions during this time. My brother had my sister-in-law, so he had his wife. I had to be strong for my dad is what I felt like. So it was pretty much hard for me to show emotion because I, I felt I needed to hide away and be strong for my dad. Uh, so, so I hid behind the camera and I, and I just shot. And this is just late night. And then these become the worst. This, this was basically two weeks before, before she died. 
she just couldn't get warm. So she was sitting there in the kitchen and she, she asked me not to take photos. So I stopped and then she called me back and said, it's okay, I understand. So I kept, I kept shooting. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's tough to talk about you know, photo terms and, and stuff like that when you're, when you're looking at these. It just it brings it all back. But if you want to look at photo aspects of, of these type of photo stories, it's the details that matter. It's the drugs on the left-hand side of the frame, her tea because she couldn't get warm. We're filling the frame on the right with whatever notes she had. And then the kitchen is whatever the kitchen was at the time. And the pictures on the refrigerator, they're actually still there. We're, we're many years past, but they're, they're still on the fridge. You know, it's, it's just so many pictures and, and stuff inside of pictures. And this just exudes so much emotion. Same thing, you know, the difference, a lot of people ask, what's the difference? How do you decide color or black and white? And that's just a feeling you get when you shoot or when you edit. I mean, you shoot and you don't know what you get all the time when you're photographing. Sometimes you go, this image would look great in black and white, but you don't know it until you sit there and you process it, and it then comes down to emotion. What conveys the story the best? What works? And not every image works in color or in black and white. Some look great in color and look great in black and white, and we are faced with this, this decision today to decide which it is. And there's no right or wrong. It's what's best for you and what story you want to convey. So she, she was all right with me taking the photos after she thought about it. She told me she understood why, and, it, and, and I told her, you have to do the bad with the good, because if you don't, you don't really have photos of, of very much after that. Uh, you know, you do these photojournalistic type shots when it comes to sports or athletes retiring, generally not people dying, but it's part of the story. That's your, that's your job. I mean, I, whether I'm shooting personally or whether I'm shooting for a job, it doesn't matter. If I'm making a dollar, or I'm shooting for free, or I'm making $10,000 shooting, I'm going to do the same job time and time again. I want to get in, I want to tell the story. No matter what it is, I, it, it doesn't matter. There's always a story somewhere. And a lot of people struggle with, well, what do I shoot? I have nothing going on in my town. I have nobody to photograph. There is so much going on in the world today that you can photograph and you can create stories. One of the challenges that I just gave people on my website is find a location and sit there for an hour and just photograph. Find the images. And it's a challenge. I did the challenge myself. And for the first 20 minutes, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm not really getting anything until I sat there and was like, all right, there's images in front of me. I just have to find them. I just have to create them and think about it. So I guess this was pretty much the last image. So this was a year. Uh, basically, you put a, 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 a headstone up a year after you bury somebody. Um, so this rounded it out. A lot of these stones I brought back from Israel. Because uh, we, don't, we don't really leave the flowers as much, but we leave the, uh, the stones because stones don't really blow away or they last longer. So I brought a lot of those back from Israel. She never got to go there, so I went with my brother for, a, for an event that I was actually photographing. Um, and that, I mean, that, that wraps up this particular photo story. I, I wanted to share this because a lot of people are afraid to, to show emotion today. They're afraid to, you know, so you show emotion. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. We're emotional beings. Uh, you show it through the images. Uh, I've done many photo stories after. I love photo stories. This is just one that's on my website at all times. Most people don't understand the reasoning for the hair. They don't, they don't know why I have a fro. Um, I was growing the fro before my mom got sick, but when she got sick and started to have chemo, we joked that if she lost her hair, she could have mine. Luckily, she didn't lose her hair, so I got to keep mine. But when she died, I didn't cut it. I just felt like growing it and, and just going, I, just to be different. So that's, I mean, that's pretty much the story behind having the hair. Uh, most people don't really know that. I have it on the website in, in a, because I sat at the cemetery a year after she died, and I made a video just talking about how I felt 
sharing some emotions from that time, and uh, and then this became the last the last photo of that story, which absolutely sucks. But I, I love I, I want to open it to questions. I don't even know if I'm supposed to do Q and A, but I love questions, so feel free to ask them while I have time. So the question is, how do I narrow down the images when I, when I, how do you narrow them down? So that's, you, you, sometimes you have to get rid of the images that you may like because they don't fit into the story. Um, it, it, it all, what I do is I sit there and I like to do chronological stories. I like images to go in the order that they were taken because I just feel like that's right. If you're doing a wedding, the images progress throughout the day. In this case, it progressed over the months, um, it just becomes a feel. Does this image work well here? Does this image fit the story? Like, is it a, is it a photo of, that, that just totally has no place? And if it has no place, it could be the best photo that you have, but if it doesn't fit in the story, you sometimes just have to take it out. Yeah. Yes? Do I find it easier to capture the emotion in a happy situation versus a dark situation? To pull out the, so the question is basically, is it, e is it easier to pull out in a situation? I think you can pull emotion out in any situation. You just have to find it. You can pull an emotion, emotion out of an inanimate object. That's our job as a photographer, is to tell a story of whatever it is. It's, you can tell a story of an inanimate object. And if you can do that, if you can add emotion to something that has no emotion, then you're doing a fantastic job as a photographer. And it may not have to be a photo story of what that object is, but if you can pull some kind of emotion, anytime you can elicit a response or an emotion from somebody, you're doing something good. If they're not just sitting there clicking through and going eh, 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 but when they stop and they question it, then you've done something right. Next. Throw them out. Let's go. Keep them coming. That's only two questions. Don't fail me now. Steve, you all right? What else? Anybody? Yes. Yes. So the question is, um, I <laughs> use the camera to hide my emotions. What about my family members? Were they... In, I'll paraphrase, in essence, okay with me shooting them. I'm a big proponent of just saying, Simon, can I curse on this? Uh, screw it. I'm a big fan of saying, screw it, just do it, uh, and apologize later. It's easier to ask for uh, forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. That's, you just have certain, like when I was shooting in the, in the, in the hospital in HIPAA, not HIPAA, the nurse is like, you can't do this, you can't do this. I'm like, I'm going to do this. HIPAA says you can't. Well, this is my mom. I think that supersedes anything else that you, that, well, I'm, I've always questioned authority. I've always pushed buttons. I don't, what are they going to do, you know? But in terms of their emotions, my, nobody really said don't do this. Um, I'm very respect, there was one image that <laughs> this reminds me of that I didn't take. She was in hospice for two days before she passed away. And I was going to take a photo of her dead in the bed, honestly. Um, but I didn't, I, it's in my mind. I didn't do it because I thought people wouldn't understand. They wouldn't get it. So I didn't do it, uh, but it's, it's here. I, it, it's always gonna be there. So certain times I guess you just don't shoot. And that was, that was one of the times. I, I don't regret not doing it. It, as a photographer, as part of a photo story, this was my compromise, was, was, the, was the gravestone, because the, there's nothing that puts an ending on a story like that. So, what else? Yes? So the question was, the, the photo challenge that I just talked about, what was my photo story? My light is now orange or yellow. That's cool. Um, the photo story that I did was at a coffee shop. I went to the coffee shop. I sat my ass. I can say ass, right? Ass is OK. We got clearance. Uh, I sat in one spot with my cup of tea 
at a place called La Colombe in Philly, and I just photographed. And I used a D4S, and I used my 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. And a lot of the questions I got was like, weren't you afraid that people were going to look at you weird that you're shooting with this gear? Or did you ask for permission to be in there and do that? And I, I didn't ask for permission to do it. I sat there. If they had questions, I would have answered them. I wasn't taking photos. I wasn't sitting there, you know, that girl sitting over there and taking photos of her. I was looking for images. And you can see it on, on fronosphoto.com. But the first images that I started with were shots of the coffee cup, the tea cup. I drank green tea. Drinking tea and shooting wide angles of that. And then I'm like, wait, there's a big sign that says La Colombe up here in lights. Why don't I go vertical and turn on the live view? Because it gives me that option, and I can frame it this way because I can't get low enough. Plus, it looks more inconspicuous. And then, I, and then I got photos from there. And then I found angles. And then there were lights. And then I found you know, three lights in a row. And I started telling a story that way. And in the end, I came out with some really nice images. And so it's, it, it's a challenge that you could do. You go to a bus stop. You go to a park. Just make sure it's not kids these days that you don't know so people don't give you crap about that because we always have to be careful. But just find those photo stories no matter where you go. Yes. Nobody raised their hand. Yes, again, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is about, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie, thank you. Uh, the question was about the chronological order. If there's an image that doesn't fit, but it would, be, it would fit better earlier or later, and it doesn't fit into that order, do I change it? Reluctantly, sometimes, yes. It hurts me. It hurts. It's painful, but it is what it is. Sometimes you have to tell the story. If you're building a photo book or something somewhere, sometimes you want two verticals next to each other that are facing. So it, in, instead of having somebody facing out and facing out, you want them facing in because it tells a different story. So that's another whole thing and a whole other talk that they just, they just gave me another 25 minutes to talk about is that you can talk about uh, telling stories in your books because sometimes the images have to, to work well with each other. And in that case, that's a good question. Yes, I, I break. It, there's, no, there's no definitive rules. They're personal. Like, I don't crop my images. And people yell at me, you're an, you're an ass or a donkey. I was going to add the hole after it, but I added donkey in the middle. <laughs> you know, so, but it's just, they're personal things. And in your personal work, you can do whatever you want. And, and another thing is, will, will I crop when it came to shooting weddings and putting stuff in an album? Yeah, because that's their album. That doesn't. That's what makes their story better. But that's just to fit that square. And that's for a client. That's totally different. You have to get rid of certain morals and, well, not morals, but I've got another minute and 20 some seconds plus 24 that they're giving me extra. What else? What is the best smelling camera box? What is the what? Best smelling what is the best smelling camera box is the question. I don't know. I just got handed a DX01 back there. After, after they were afraid to send it to me because they think I'm going to rip on it. I mean, it is priced at $5.99, but it is gonna be, I think it's going to be pretty good when I get it. That, I haven't smelled it yet, but I'm sure it smells pretty good. Give me one more good one, someone. Yes, Charlie, right? I remembered. I'm so good at that. I don't, I, I, I can't reiterate that question fast enough because there was too much and I lost it. I just like to shoot. I just like to tell photo stories. Every time I go out there, I like to create something. Um, th that's my goal time and time again, is to tell an awesome photo story no matter what it is uh, and, and capture great images. Like I said, whether I'm doing it for nothing or I'm getting paid 10 grand or more, it's all about the stories. So I want to thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed that different take on a photo story. Not always happy. Uh, and that's it. I'm going to sign out Jared Poland. Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.